In this video, we're going to have a look at a system of three simultaneous equations with three different variables and how to solve them using matrices. So the first thing to do here is to try and get these three equations here, minus x plus y plus 3z equals 1, 2x plus y minus z equals 4, y plus 2z equals minus 1, get that in matrix form. Well, we can do that simply by looking at the coefficients of the different variables. So the x coefficients are minus 1, 2, and 0. The coefficients of y are all 1. You can see there the coefficient of y there is 1, 1, and 1. And the coefficients of z are 3, minus 1, and 2. Now we'll multiply that matrix by x, y, z. I'm going to propose that we get the answer 1, 4, minus 1 as in the right-hand side of these three equations here. Now let's just verify that, don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at multiplying this matrix out. So if I multiply this out, I get minus one times x, plus one times y, plus three times z. Yeah, minus x plus y plus three z equals one. Two x plus one y minus one z equals four. And no x's plus one y plus 2z equals minus 1. Yes, that system of equations there is represented by this matrix equation. Let's just take it a step further. Let's just call that matrix there M. So what this equation really says is that when we take M and multiply it by x, y, z, we get 1, 4, minus 1. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to rearrange this matrix equation in a way. I'm going to multiply both left-hand sides of the equation by the inverse of m. So I'm going to multiply to the left there, or pre-multiply, as it's sometimes known, by m to the minus 1. But because I've done it that side, I've got to pre-multiply that side as well. Now it's important that if you multiply to the left on the left-hand side, you multiply to the left on the right-hand side as well. What wouldn't make sense... Just rubbing this out for a second. What wouldn't make sense is if I multiplied by m to the minus 1 on the left here, but on the right here, matrix multiplication isn't commutative. Therefore, that's not the same thing being done to both sides. If you were to do 1 to the left and 1 to the right, both of them must be to the left of the existing expression. So notice here that I've got an inverse of a matrix touching its corresponding matrix. That always, as we learned in our previous videos leads to the identity matrix or the matrix equivalent of the number one. Therefore, this implies that if this here becomes the equivalent of the, the matrix equivalent of one, we get x, y, z equals inverse m of one, four, minus one. We've got an equation now explicitly that gives us x, y, and z in terms of what we already know. So now the problem shifts. Now what we need to do is find out what the inverse of m is. Well, we've got a video on this that you've uh, that you've looked at previously. If you don't know how to find the inverse of a three by three matrix, I suggest you look at one of the, one of my videos on that, and that'll really make sense of what I'm about to do. So first of all, to find the inverse, the first step is find the determinant of the matrix. So. The determinant of the matrix, let's take this top left hand item, so it's minus 1 times the determinant. So imagine blacking out this row and column, the same row and column as the minus 1. So the remaining elements, these elements here, we want to find, we want times minus 1 by the determinant of those elements. So minus 1 times the determinant of 1, 1, minus 1, 2. Then take, so now moving on to this element here, 2. So take away 2 times the determinant of, so we get rid of all the row items in the same column and row as the 2. These items remain, so the determinant of that matrix. So minus 2 times 1, 1, 3, 2. Okay, get rid of that. Then plus 0, and we know the answer to this is going to be 0. However, just for the purposes of working out 
and uh, explain it properly. If we black out all items in the same row and column as this zero remaining are these four items here. So we've got one, one, three, minus one remaining. Okay, so carrying on with that, we get minus one. So find the determinant of one, one, minus one, two. We get one times two, take one times minus one. Then take two, lots of. Then one times two, take one times three. And the zero we can ignore. That disappears. Equals. So two, add one is three. So minus one, three. Take two lots of, then we've got one times two, take one times three, minus one equals minus three plus two equals minus one. The determinant is minus one, so remember that. We'll have a look at that again in a second. So reminding ourselves what m was equal to, m was equal to this here. Just drag that across there. So what we've got to do now is find out the matrix of cofactors. Now, if you're unsure on how to do this, I made a video on again on how to find the inverse of a matrix. But let's just have a quick recap and a very quick recap of that. So each item in the matrix has its own cofactor, it's called. And we'll find a cofactor by, so let's say this top left item here, this minus one. Let's find its cofactor by deleting its column and row. And its cofactor is found by finding the matrix of the remaining items. So C11, and I call it 1, 1, because the first row and first column equals one times two, take one times minus one, which is equal to three. The next cofactor going vertically so C21, second row, first column, equals, so we delete the row and column. The determinant of the remaining items is one times two, take one times three, equals minus one, and C31 equals, and we'll stop highlighting now, we'll just visualize it, is the determinant of one, times minus one, take one times three. Minus one take three is minus four. So let's now try and find the cofactor of C12. And I'm sort of telling a little bit of a lie because what we're finding so far isn't the cofactor yet. We're gonna to have to apply a sign change to some of these cofactors that we found in a bit to make them the true cofactor, but I'll go through that in a second. So cover up row and column and the remaining items we find the determinant of those so covering up the uh, the top middle row and column we get the determinant of two times two take zero times minus one which is four c two two cover the middle row and column we get minus one times two, take zero times three equals minus two. And then C three, two, third row, second column. We cover up that row and column corresponding to that value there. So cover up that row, that column. We get minus one times minus one, take, two times three equals minus five. Finally, C one three equals, so cover up the top right uh, item and its row and column. Get two times one, take naught times one equals two. C two three equals, so cover up that row and column, 
we get minus 1 times 1. Take away 0 times 1, which is equal to minus 1. And C33 equals minus 1 times 1. Take 2 times 1, which gives minus 3. So we're almost there. The matrix of cofactors. So we put each of the numbers we've just found into a matrix in the corresponding places. So we get 3 minus 1 minus 4. 4 minus 2 minus 5. And 2 minus 1 minus 3. So they're not quite the cofactors yet. Because what we need to do before they become cofactors is apply the following sign changes to the items. So the top left hand item, we apply a positive sign to it. So positive 3, yeah, stays the same. Here we apply a negative sign, so minus minus 1 makes positive 1. So we're going to rub that sign out. Apply positive and negative 4 stays as negative 4. Apply negative to 4, it becomes negative 4. So that's going to change the sign. Apply a positive to negative 2, stays negative 2. A negative to negative 5, that makes it positive. And apply the same to the rest, we can see that this one undergoes a sign change as well. So that 1, that minus 1 becomes 1. Okay, so now almost there. So the inverse of m is 1 over the determinant of m times the transpose of c. So equals, so 1 over the determinant of m, and we worked out the determinant earlier to be minus 1. So 1 over minus 1 times the transpose of C. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read out the columns, but I'm going to write it in rows, and that's an easy way of doing the transpose. So 3, 1, minus 4 is the first column. So the first row is 3, 1, minus 4. The second column, minus 4, minus 2, 5, means the second row is minus 4, minus 2, 5. Then the third column, 2, 1, minus 3. The third row is 2, 1, minus 3 in the inverse. Equals... Okay, so let's apply that 1 over minus 1. We get minus 3, 4, minus 2, 1, sorry, minus 1, 2, minus 1. Changing the sign of everything because we're times in the matrix by 1 over minus 1 or minus 1, as it works out to be. 4, minus 5, 3 is the inverse. And we can actually check this on the calculator now. So let's have a check. So the original matrix, menu, there it is there, option 4, matrix, and define matrix A. It's a 3 by 3, so 3 rows, 3 columns. Let's go back up to the original matrix, there it is there. So minus 1, 1, 3. So I normally say matrices in columns, but unfortunately the calculator accepts it in rows. So what I'm doing here, I'm inputting the matrix in rows, contrary to how I normally write it. 2, 1, minus 1, and 0, 1, 2. Okay, so operation. I want to do matrix calculation. And I want to do matrix A, so 3, and then to the power of minus 1. So there's an X minus 1 button there. So matrix A to the minus 1 which should give me exactly what I've got below, so let's go and check. There it is there. So reading it in columns, I see I've got minus 3, 4, minus 2, minus 1, 2, minus 1, and 4, minus 5, 3. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's correct now. The calculator told me so. Right, so there's the inverse. So we're almost there. We're almost there. So we worked out before, and here it was here, that x, y, z... X, Y, Z was equal to inverse M times 1, 4, minus 1. 
copy. Put that down there just to remind myself. So x, y, z is the inverse of m times 1, 4, minus 1. Okay, so let's go for it. Equals the inverse of m, so minus 3, 4, minus 2, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 4, minus 5, 3, times 1, 4, minus 1, gives me, okay, well, minus 3 times 1, so that's minus 3, take 4, take another 4, so minus 3, take 4, take 4, is minus 11, second one, so 4, add 8, is 12, add 5, is 17, and then third one, minus 2, minus 4 is minus 6, minus another 3 is minus 9. So therefore, the top one, x, equals minus 11, y equals 17, and z equals minus 9 are my answers. And as with any good answer, you should draw the marker's attention to it. And there we have the solution to the three simultaneous equations. However, there is a way of checking this answer using the simultaneous equation solver on your calculator. So if you go to equation solving mode and select option one, simultaneous equation, and there were three unknowns. So scroll back up to the original question. So we saw the answer was minus one X plus one Y plus three Z equals one. 2x plus 1y minus 1z is 4 and 0x's plus 1y plus 2z equals minus 1. Press equals, we see the first answer is minus 11 as expected. The second answer, 17, as expected. And the third answer, minus 9, as expected. So that's that. That's how to solve simultaneous equations in three variables using matrices. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.